Sonic, the heart of your system. Hello, Brandy here from Kit Guru, and in this video I'm taking a look at the Antec P8 gaming case. It is at the more budget end of the spectrum when it comes to cases, as it retails for around £60 here in the UK, or around $70 in the US. This case, my first initial impression was, damn, it's really lightweight. Uh, when the delivery driver sort of handed me the box, I was like, is there a case in here? Uh, and that's just because it only weighs about 7.5 kilograms, which is actually quite lightweight for a case. It's not necessarily a bad thing, as it does make it a little bit sort of easier to move around, uh, but it is a clue to the sort of construction, and it does mean that it's either going to have quite a lot of plastic going on, or that the metal used for construction is going to be thinner than you'd find in a more expensive case case. This case is a mid tower size so you'll find the dimensions are it's 210 millimeters wide, it has a height of 443 millimeters and a depth of 470 millimeters. Aesthetically I don't think it looks too bad, it's not really an ugly case but it's not that sort of like exciting and pretty either. It looks very similar to a lot of cases that are already on the market at the moment, sort of the big black boxy design. Uh, also if you're a lover of RGB you might find that you're a little bit disappointed by this case. It doesn't come with any of those like flashy RGB lighting that we're so used to seeing on pretty much everything these days. Uh, however it does have some lighting, it's got two white LED fans in the front and then a further white LED fan in the back. If you're going to be using some pretty components and you like to see what's going on inside this case, as you can see it has got a tempered glass side panel. Uh, I definitely think this is a better choice for a case as acrylic, even though it is a bit cheaper, it does sort of scratch more easily um, and I definitely prefer to have tempered glass. Uh, on the inside as well, uh, thankfully because it has got a giant window that pretty much covers the whole side of the case, there is a PSU shroud that runs along the whole length of the case, so I really think that's going to help to keep that sort of like power supply cables and things all under control. Uh, it's got Antec sort of printed into the metal uh, on the left hand side here and overall I don't think the branding is really too overdone. It's quite neat so you've got Antec on there and then also on the front of the case you'll see that there's an Antec logo that lights up as well and hopefully when I've got some components in there we can see it lit up. Overall, I do think the build quality is really quite good for this price point. Like I said, it is quite a lightweight case, so you will find that the steel is quite thin in certain areas. However, I think the overall structure and areas like the motherboard tray do actually feel quite strong and sturdy. They don't have too much flex to them, and I think that's really going to matter when you're putting the case together. You don't want that motherboard to feel like it's going to be dropping off. Uh, also, I like the way they've mixed the materials in this case. Obviously, it does have uh, some plastic going on alongside the steel, uh, but the way they've mixed it means that it doesn't noticeably look too sort of plasticky and cheap. Um, also, another good thing is that I noticed there isn't any sharp edges as well, uh, so you're not going to cut your hands open, which is quite important when you're working in a more budget case. If we take a look at the front of the case, you'll notice that all the ports are sort of down this left hand side here. There's two USB 3 ports, you also get a jack for the headphone and the microphone. There's also a power and reset button and then you've got two LEDs as well. So one of those will be for power and one of those will be for the hard drive. Um, it's also where you'll find the vents for sort of like the fans um, and there's also a further vent along the bottom as well. They do seem to be sort of of a decent size however I know with cases that have a similar design to this they often have another vent down the other side uh, but hopefully there's enough space on there to get enough air through those fans um, and it's not going to be too choked and the temperature is going to get too hot uh, but we'll find out when I put some components in it. So in the front like I said it has got some white LED fans they are um, white fans by An Antec and they're 120 millimeter fans however this case can support up to three 120 millimeter fans in the front, uh, two 140 millimeter fans, or you can have a 360 millimeter radiator for uh, water cooling if you wish. So now I'm going to yank off the front of this case so we can take a look at what's going on on the inside. Ah, it's a little bit stiff but not too bad, I have experienced harder uh, front 
panels to take off. Um, you do have to be very, very careful though, because of the way the cables are laid out, they are sort of attached to the front panel itself. Uh, and I really, really don't like the look of the cables either. They look quite thin and flimsy, and I can see a sort of a bit of glue and stuff going on as well. So I'm not sure how well they're gonna hold up over time, especially as you might wanna remove this front panel on a regular basis, because you have got a uh, dust filter in the front here. Um, it does sort of like uh, clip in and out quite easily. Uh, but I would be quite worried sort of taking this front panel off on a regular basis to get to this dust filter. Um, I will definitely check how well the USB ports and things work though when I have got components in this build. Um, but I really, really don't like the look of them. <laughs> they do definitely look a little bit on the cheap side. If we take a look on top of the case, uh, you'll see that it also has a dust filter. Um, it is really easy to take on and off because it's attached by these like magnetic strips. Um, however, I'm not sure how actually functional it will be as the mesh that they've like opted to use has quite big holes in it. Uh, you can really see through them. So I'm not sure if any sort of dust settling on top of the case is really gonna be stopped by this dust filter. Um, also, there is holes for some more fans. So you've got the option of three 120 millimeter fans on the top, two 140 millimeter fans, or officially this case does support a 240 millimeter radiator in the top, but it does look like you might be able to fit a 360 millimeter radiator if you do take the fan out the back, um, but it isn't officially supported. It just looks that, like there might be enough space for it. This case definitely does seem to have quite a lot of support uh, for loads of different like fan and water cooling configurations, which is definitely a plus for me. I'm now gonna tip this case very carefully on its back just so we can take a look at what's going on on the bottom. Sorry if it's a little bit dusty. <laughs> so it's got uh, four plastic feet. Each one of them has a little rubber pad and they actually do a pretty good job of stopping the case moving around on the desk. Um, however, I do find this case at the moment is a little bit sort of, um, unstable because the temple glass side panel does weigh quite a bit more than the more lightweight steel panel. I'm hoping that when I put some components in this case, it's gonna sort of uh, balance out the um, unsturdiness issue that it's got at the moment. Uh, you'll also see that there is a, well, it's not really a dust filter. Like it, you can't call it a dust filter. There's like a panel of mesh, which I think uh, Antic are claiming is a dust filter, but the holes in this are like absolutely huge. Um, It's just a flimsy piece of mesh. Like it's very awkward. I've taken it out now, but it's very awkward to get back in in and I can't imagine when you've got components in here like trying to fiddle under the case to try to get this back in place. It's just gonna be so awkward and I really don't think it's gonna do anything when it comes to keeping dust out. Um, You'll also see there's some screws on the bottom here, and this is for the hard drive bays that are inside the case. Um, I really like this because it's not something you expect to see in a more budget case. Uh, often the hard drive bay is like permanently fixed in place. Um, but with this case, you can like undo the screws and move it across slightly so you have more space in front of the power supply. Or if you're not gonna be using hard drives, you can actually completely remove the cage. Um, and then you've got even more room for cable management space. And I think that's definitely what I'm gonna do because most of the time, I just use SSDs in my bills now anyway. I find that these side panels on this case are pretty easy to remove. Uh, this front side panel here has uh, four thumb screws for the tempered glass, and then there's two thumb screws for the steel uh, panel on the back, and both of them come off pretty easily. I'm just gonna remove this front panel now so we can take a look inside. Uh, you'll also notice down the bottom here that it has got this like nice little uh, ledge going on. I do really like this as it means like when you unscrew all the four thumb, thumb screws, uh, the glass panel doesn't actually sort of uh, crash onto the desk. However, it does make it slightly awkward to get out. There we go. <laughs> So on the inside of the case, you'll notice at the back here, it has got another 120 millimeter fan. It's the same as the fans in the front. So it's an Antec uh, white LED fan. Underneath the fan, you've got seven PCI slots. And the design of these is definitely a little bit different to what I'm used to. Uh, the screws are actually on the outside of the case and they're sort of like, is a two part way to sort of, if you want to get a graphics card in here. Um, I'm definitely used to having the screws on the inside and I haven't actually built in a case with 
this design yet. So it'll be interesting to see whether it makes it easier or more awkward. Um, my guess is that it's going to be more awkward uh, just because the mainstream is to have the PCI sort of screws on the inside um, as opposed to the outside. So I'm going to go that's probably the easiest way to do it. Um, also, I don't like the way they've done the PCI slots. Um, it seems to be, even on budget cases now, they seem to have got the idea and they make all of them like removable and you can also reinsert them. Um, but this one is like the top one you can remove and reinsert, but the uh, other six of them are sort of those PCI slots you have to snap off. And I really don't like that because you can end up with a sharp edge. Um, and also if you ever sort of change the configuration, you can't replace any of those um, lost PCI slots. Looking inside the case, I can see that all the motherboard standoffs are already in place. That's definitely a big plus for me as I think it saves a little bit of time when it comes to building in a case. It does support full-size ATX boards, micro ATX boards, and mini ITX boards as well. Uh, when it comes to CPU cooler clearance, you've got 165 millimeters, and then going this way, you've got 390 millimeters, so there's plenty of space for a nice big graphics card. So I'm now gonna flip the case around just so we can take a look at the other side. So that side panel was pretty easy to remove. Uh, I've definitely had harder side panels to take off. Uh, as you can see, the front IO cables are coated in a nice black plastic. I definitely do think that is a plus as this is a window case and you don't want any sort of like crazy rainbow cables going on and ruining your overall aesthetic. Uh, this case does support uh, four two and a half inch SSD slots and it's also got space for two three and a half inch hard drives as well. Uh, what I do really like is that Antec have included all the f all four of the SSD mount uh, trays um, because often you'll find on budget cases maybe that it says that it supports four SSDs but you actually only get one tray included and then you've got to buy the others yourself and it's definitely a bit irritating if you're like in the middle of a build and then you realise this um, but with this one they are included which is definitely a plus. Uh, you've got a mount for uh, two around the back here and there's also... Um, Another mount for two on top of the PSU shroud. Uh, when it comes to the hard drives, they are in this little cage down here. Um, and the hard drive bays themselves are sort of a plain black plastic. And they do feature that sort of like flexi tallest design. So it should be pretty easy to insert your hard drives. Um, when it comes to cable management, I think the cable management holes are pretty decent um like you can see you've got two slots up the top here there's another slot there for like a fan cable or like the eight pin for your cpu um there's lots of little uh, slots for cable ties and things which i definitely like as it's really really annoying when you've got a cable you just can't find the right place to thread the cable tie through um and i do like this uh, rather unusual big slot here so often you get like um, three sort of slots with grommets or whatever um, this case doesn't have any grommets but they are sort of like rounded off nicely uh, but this slot is definitely a bit unique but I do actually quite like it because I think it gives you a bit more um, room to do your own cable management where you want it you aren't sort of limited to where those holes are uh, you can sort of like move your cables up and down depending on what motherboard you're using like the um, SATA ports might be in a slightly different position whereas with this case it's going to work with pretty much whatever motherboard you've opted to go for um, and I do definitely like that. Uh, when it comes to clearance I think it's pretty generous like this side is quite narrow behind the motherboard tray uh, but this side is slightly recessed uh, so I do think you've got sort of plenty of side on the left hand side of the case um, and I think I'm going to route my cables up through the left side um, as you definitely have like a couple more centimeters of clearance. I did notice that the space in front of the power supply is a little bit narrow by default. Um, it's definitely gonna be a little bit awkward to route cables through there, particularly if you are using a modular power supply as those cables sort of stick out a bit further. Um, but luckily, like I said, the hard drive bay can be sort of moved forward slightly, or you can remove it completely and get loads of space under that PSU shroud for all those cables you're gonna be routing. So that is the Antec P8 case empty. That's like my first initial impressions, the general overview. Um, now through the power of editing, we can fast forward in time after I've done my finished build and put this case through its paces, check temperatures, noise, etc. Um, yeah, let's jump forward in time and see how I found building in this case. I 
I've now got the Antec P8 all set up beside me here and what I can say is a lot more stable now it definitely feels uh, more balanced now it's full of components and that tempered glass side panel isn't gonna make it feel like it's gonna tip over I did also check the front panel headers uh, just because I really didn't like the look of those cables and I wanted to make sure that it was working correctly uh, fortunately it is however I'm not sure how long that will last if you like to rip off that front panel on a regular basis to get to the dust filters uh, here is a full list of all the parts I used in this build as well. I think they are sort of in line what I expect people to put in a more budget case. There's nothing too crazy in there. Uh, so that means my testing is probably uh, going to be relevant to most people. I think they create a really nice sort of uh, black subtle aesthetic as well. And it sort of looks quite nice with the hint of subtle white lighting. The front fans light up a bright white, but it is quite subtle, and the back fan in my case definitely has a different idea. The lighting looks quite uneven, definitely a little bit scuffed. It's not really a good look. Uh, on the front of the case, the white Antec logo is now lighting up. It is a nice bright white, and I do think it makes this case look a little bit more premium. When it came to building in this case, I found it to be pretty straightforward. Uh, you get a little bag of screws, so there should be a screw in there for everything you need. Uh, there was also some Velcro strips as well to sort of help out with the cable management. There was a very basic manual that does have some images on how to sort of instruct you to build a PC, but I wouldn't recommend uh, building for the first time using that manual as it didn't have that much information. I found the P8 to be a good size to work in. Once I removed those hard drive bays, so there was plenty of space for the power supply and all the sort of associated cables. It was very straightforward for me to maneuver the motherboard into place and it has a good few millimeters of clearance above the power supply shroud. Uh, however, one of the standoffs was missing. Like when I went to install the motherboard, uh, I did have to delve into the bag of screws and get out a spare standoff. The eagle eyed amongst you might also notice like I actually am missing the IO shield on this build. I promise that I didn't forget it, I just could not find it anywhere. I think I probably put it in like a safe place and just forgot where it is. Uh, however, because it's a test build, fortunately it won't be around long enough to get too dusty. The different PCI slot system that Antec opted to use didn't actually turn out to be that bad. I found it pretty straightforward to insert the GPU. The only real awkward moment came when I was trying to sort of like hold it up and wrangle a screwdriver at the same time because it doesn't have any thumb screws. As I said in my overview, I absolutely hated the snap off slots. Uh, the metal surrounding them was really, really thin. So when I was trying to yank them out, I actually sort of like bent the slots all out of shape. I think they were really welded into place like a little bit too firmly and I really thought I was going to break the case trying to get them out. Uh, thankfully though, uh, once I removed them, they didn't leave any sharp edges behind. I originally was going to place my SSD around the front of the case uh, on top of the PSU shroud in one of those trays uh, but unfortunately I couldn't actually get it to fit because of the layer of my motherboard. The USB 3 connector is just in the wrong place so I couldn't have enough space to fit both the SATA data and power connectors through um, and it was actually a similar story in all the SSD uh, trays throughout this case um, just because they are so shallow uh, when they're up against the uh, side of the case or on top of the PSU shroud you really don't have much clearance to fit the cables into the SSD eventually I did manage to get my SSD to fit around the back uh, but it really was a tight squeeze to get those cables in and there is quite a lot of pressure on the connectors which I don't really like. I've just flipped this case around and taken off this side panel so we can take a look at my cable management and in general I found this case to be pretty easy and straightforward to cable manage. It didn't take me that long at all to do however if you feel the need to tell me how crap it is in the comments I'm afraid we can no longer be friends. Uh, so the position for the hole for the 8 pin is in a really good spot and I also like the cutout in the PSU shroud as I found it was in the perfect position to thread all those skinny IA cables through and you don't have to root them over the power supply shroud which can look a little bit unneat. Uh, when it came to the depth it has a really decent depth even behind the motherboard tray even though it's a bit more raised out uh, I found there was plenty of space to uh, thread the 24 pin the thick cable right where I wanted to and I didn't have to do that awkward thing of trying to squeeze the side panel back on. My main issue when it came to cable management was actually the slot that I really liked the look of originally. It turned out that it was just 
too shallow for that 24 pin. I couldn't bend it round at a nice angle and therefore the way I've rooted it definitely looks a little bit odd. Ironically, I think if I'd use a less premium power supply, I'd probably be better off as the thick braiding on the 24 pin uh, made it a little less flexible and because the um, slot was so shallow, I just couldn't get it at a good angle. I think that's probably why the mainstream approach to uh, cable rooting options is that most cases use like a hole with a grommet instead of this uh, sort of slot design. Another small annoyance that I had that isn't really a big problem but it's something that bugs me is that I had to use a Molex cable in this case it's sort of buried in that jungle of cables down there somewhere and that's because Antec opted to use a Molex cable to power the LED light on the front of the case. I much prefer it when uh, case manufacturers use a SATA power to power any sort of lights or fans and things they've got going on as it just sort of means there's less cables to cable manage and I'm not having to add a Molex connector to my modular power supply just for one little LED light basically. So now I'm going to move on to the performance of this case and I definitely think it is one of its best features uh, because even though I'm only using the three fans that came with the case and just like quite a cheap CPU cooler it did surprisingly well at keeping everything quite cool and quiet. Uh, so for the noise testing I used my little acoustic tester while it was idle and it was only about 33.5 decibels and that is really quite quiet. I'm sat next to it now, it is on and I can barely barely hear the fans so it's going to be great for when you're sort of like browsing the web or just doing less demanding tasks. Uh, when I put it under load, so I did a bit of uh, gaming and I also ran Ada 64 for 10 minutes as well to get all the temperatures up and get those fans spinning. It did increase by about 10 decibels, uh, so it was definitely a noticeable increase in sound and it went up to 43.5 decibels. So it's definitely not a quiet case during a gaming session, but I think it is far from annoying. It didn't actually do too bad and if you're a headset user, you're definitely not going to have an issue. Uh, next I did the uh, temperature testing so once again I did the um, sort of playing games on the PC and I ran Ada64 again for 10 minutes and uh, while it was under load it did pretty good. The CPU only got up to 57 degrees and the GPU got up to 79 degrees so that is uh, very very good it's uh, not much warmer than idle temperatures uh, for the CPU idled around 33 degrees and the GPU idled around 39 degrees so all in all I think it definitely does a good job of keeping everything cool and it has got space for even more fans as well so if you're going to be running a overclock system or maybe you're going to be putting some more powerful components in here that are going to be creating more heat you can add like an additional three fans and then get even more cooling performance. Overall, I do have mixed feelings about the Antec P8. There is no sort of doubt that it's a budget case as you do have those like dodgy dust filters and the IO cables don't really like the best quality. You also miss out on any sort of like fancy RGB lighting. Building in it was a little bit awkward in some aspects. However, I think for the £60 price tag, it definitely can get away with a few things. Once it's all set up, I really like how it looks. It's a very attractive case and I really like the sort of like tempered glass side panel. I think the white fan lighting is also quite attractive as well and it makes it look quite sleek and classy. You have got some good options when it comes to cooling. There's plenty of space for loads of different uh, fan configurations. And I do think those Antec fans do a pretty decent job of keeping everything cool and quiet. I think if you're willing to make a few sacrifices, then the Antec P8 is a decent case to consider if you're on a tight budget. If you like this video from KitGuru, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more from KitGuru, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And there's also a bell icon on there as well. And if you hit that, you'll get a notification every time a new video goes live. Thank you.